Good evening, folks, and welcome to Inset right here on Consolidated Channel. The team, as always, I'm your host, Brock White, joined by my co-host, Dustin Monkey, from the Dickinson Press. In studio this week to talk about things happening this summer around town from Parks and Rec, Matt Mack is Matt Mack. Our Mac. buddy, Matt Mack. Mac. So, should be a good interview with Matt later on here. As always, though, we kick things off with a look at the week in review, the big stories from the area around the past few weeks, a few days. And we have new state champions right here in Dickinson. We talked about it last week. We did. We talked about it. And we said, it. you know... I said they're a scrappy got a team. Chance. They got a chance, and the yep. Dickinson uh, Midgets baseball team won state this past weekend. And on top of that, the girls softball team took second place, which is like taking first, in my That's opinion. And I will get into that later. I feel like they should break up the Packers over in West Fargo. Yeah, right. The West Fargo Packers are a team. Well, West Fargo has two schools, both of which are bigger than Dickinson High, and they don't force those two teams to have their own softball teams. Own they have deal. one big yeah. softball team. They've, there's been no other state champion in North Dakota history for Class A other than West Fargo, and that was before the, the sport was even sanctioned by the NDHSA. The they've kept winning. I've covered some of their state titles before. They are, yeah, they're a dynasty if there ever was one, but in my opinion, it's also a case of, uh, hey, you've got 2,400 high school kids to choose from, 1,200 of which are girls. pretty good talent pool. You got a big, more than that, yeah. I think. I got the, think they have close to like 1,500 girls to choose from. Break it up a little bit. Dickinson has Dickinson High and Trinity. That's that's it. So yeah, yeah, it's a kind of an issue. But the Dickinson Midgets baseball team, you know, by the way, congratulations to Dickinson softball yeah, team. You're, off, champions off, You're champions off, in my book. You're champions in my book. Exciting weekend for the area. My cousin's kid signed with DSU because of that. Saw, because of that yeah. too. Yeah, so that's cool. But uh, Dickinson Midgets baseball. Sean Steffens catch. Did anyone? I hope everyone saw that uh, video. It was kind of on the internet a little bit. Uh, this week we posted on our website Sean Steffen's catch a layout left field catch Ooh. to gr to win the state title. That I didn't was see that awesome. video. I was yeah. working and stuff. And awesome, Sean Steffen. He's our he's the midgets. It's quarterback. He plays ba yep. he plays basketball. He'll be a starter next year, I'm sure. Good in basketball. for him. He is left fielder for the midgets, and he stretched out, put his whole body out there, made a diving catch to win the title. I mean, that was it's a good team full of a bunch of good kids, and uh, I'm glad to see that they pulled it out. And that marks the fifth. Crown, fifth, fifth yep. state title crown for midget dating, uh, baseball. Dating back to our high school years was the first time they won Very one. Cool. Yep. So I think it was so our, my junior year. Good high school. program in place. Keep it up, guys. It's Absolutely. Good to, it's good to see. Congratulations to both teams. Yep. Midget softball and, and baseball. Uh, and other news in the area is always energy is always on the table. The Davis Refinery tables are being uh, talks are being tabled a bit because of some air quality issues over right. that way. Right. Right. Uh, Davis Refinery. I got a chance to interview. Uh, the CEO of the proposed Davis Refinery, uh, CEO of Meridian Energy Group, which is the group proposing the Davis Refinery out by uh, east of, excuse me, west of Belfield, mm -hmm. closer to Fry Freiburg and right near the Stark County line, uh, very near Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Very close. South unit. Uh, has some borders. residents quite concerned. Some the of reason for that is because uh, the National Park has to have pristine air quality. That is what makes it a national park. Yeah. Is that the EPA it's protected. air quality standards are pristine. So do you make, how can you make a pristine, you know, some people are asking, how can you have pristine air quality in that area if you have a refinery? Well, the CEO answered my questions on that, uh, that exact same question, uh, during the Wilson Basin Petroleum Conference and told me that people will be surprised at the technology. And he did not reveal the technology because it's proprietary. It's, you know, So it's something new and cutting edge to filter the emissions from they the They claim it's going to be the most environmentally friendly refinery that's ever been built. I'm just, you know, here's my, the, the business yeah. side of me thinking, money-wise, that's going to be a lot of money to have that kind of technology to filter that dollars. air. $900 million. It's going to take a long the time to pay the plant. Pay the but I mean, just that yeah, part the of the plant day. alone, just the, the part to clean the air will be astronomical if it's some kind of new revolutionary and the, technology. And apparently, and it's their technology, though. They, so they invented it. Invented it. Um, they either invented it or acquired it or something. And that's what's never been revealed to us because it's proprietary information, sure. obviously. And, um, you know, it'd take a lot to get that information. I, I do agree. I agree with both sides. You know, I'm, I'm all for, I'm all pro-business. I say, yeah. hey, if this is going to help our area, if this is going to create 200 jobs, let's, let's do the thing. And then, hey, leave the park alone. But at the same time, it's like, make sure you don't impact the park. Yeah, the park should but be protected. There's a lot be. of people that think it's too close to the park, that it shouldn't be, you know, three miles away from the park. Well, Unfortunately, that is where you build a refinery. That's where there's a rail there's a rail spur there. There is area there. There's a landowner there willing to give them the land for the refinery. The logistics makes sense. The logistics makes sense. Aside um, from its neighbor. 
Correct, and it's going to be more than just a refinery one day. I guarantee you that. Um, you know that hasn't been set in stone yet, but I guarantee it's going to be more than just a refinery. They have, you know, the the possibility of making plastics out of that, uh, just different byproducts of the oil and gas petroleum. Um, so it's going to be interesting in the long run, but I. It's going to be a story that we're going to follow for yeah, a while. And this story it's, is just getting started, really. It really, uh, really is. it is. I mean, yeah. the Billings County Commission can approve this, but the Industrial there's Commission so has to. There's so much more to go There's through. so much more. So the Industrial Commission has to have their State, say on federal, it. federal, all kinds. I think, I don't know if PSC does or not. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, the, a lot of, yeah, the federal government will have their say on this as well. And this I would assume that you're going to see the Parks legal team get involved. This will be the headlines for the next year, year or so, probably easy, yeah. for sure. Uh, Next Tuesday, June 14th, is Election Day. We have the primaries. We also have local contests as well. The mayoral candidates in Dickinson today's are uh, coming up in today's paper. They're there, and they're, uh, they're getting out, and they're getting their message out to all the voters. Absolutely. We sat down on Wednesday afternoon, or Wednesday morning and afternoon, with the three mayoral candidates, Rod Lamblom, uh, Clayton Oltmans, and Scott Decker. We asked them all the same ten, 10 questions. They were able to give us a little more spiel, their own little spiel. Uh, we asked them their age and their occupation. Ironically, we have two retired guys running for mayor out of the mm -hmm. three, and Clayton Oldmans is the youngest. He's still working. He's an mm -hmm. investment advisor uh, for Edward Jones. Uh, Scott Decker's retired military. Rod Lamblom is retired uh, planning and development director for Roosevelt Custer. So it's, uh, it's a good group of guys yeah. running for mayor. Strong I mean, group. Yeah. I, I don't want to pick one, honestly. I don't want to pick You'd one. You'd be okay with any of the three. Yes, we are making an editorial, so uh, we'll have an editorial in Friday's paper, an endorsement. Uh, it's be simply because it's the first time since myself and our management has been Dennis involved in the Dickinson Johnson Press the mayor. that Dennis Johnson was in the mayor, that we've even had a mayoral race. And when it's three people running for mayor, you know, our local newspaper is expected I to make that think, endorsement. Was he ever contested along the way? He may have been early on, but I don't not, remember, late his, not late. I lived in Dickinson since 2003, the area. I don't remember any kind of someone contesting him ever I don't think he, he may never have been contested. Yeah. And I don't even know if he was contested which that I think first is, time around it's, I think it's a great endorsement of the job he did, yes. which was, you know, quite phenomenal really yeah. throughout the, the, the 12 year tenure at 15 right. year 15 year tenure right. whatever it was yeah so every, but this is a unique position for the paper to be in right now for, for the every, press. everyone and it's, it's an interesting position for our city to be in to make this kind of a call uh, like I said we've got you've got some guys out there that have great ideas uh, that have been around the city commission process but now for you know Oltmans and Decker are on the city commission Lamblom served on the city commission stepped away because of conflict of interest with his mm -hmm. job uh, what he says a perceived conflict of interest it probably was um, but you have, you know, Lamblom's, if you had all three guys into one, you'd have one hell of a candidate. Because you have Lamblom, who has a lot of experience in planning, development, uh, f you know, state government, uh, city government, federal, federal stuff, things like that. You have Clayton Oltmans, who's a financial whiz. Uh, he's got a great financial acumen. And then you have Scott Decker, whose military leadership skills are just you know second to none, and he's you know he can just sit down and talk to every man, so open Clayton and Rod too, you know. But I just feel like you know we've got three tough, we had a this tough decision to make as a city, and I know a lot of people out there have already made that decision, but you know that's uh. Well, you have till Tuesday to make your mind up and, and get to know your candidates. Still, the research you can and get to know them in their positions and absolutely go, read our, go read our, the open read top our editorial layer. in yeah. uh, in Friday's paper. And if you disagree with us, if you disagree with our editorial, we are opening up our letters to the editor simply on Saturday, in Saturday and Sunday's paper, we will only have letters to the editor that pertain to the mayoral race. Sign them. So sign, sign them. It, put your name on there. Sign them. Don't slander we'll send anybody. Send them an email. Newsroom at the Dickinson Press .com or me, dmonkey at the Dickinson Press .com. 400 words or less about the mayoral race if you want to. If you don't, if you disagree with our, with our uh, assessment, we will, we'll print it. I encourage you to stick to facts. Yes. And stay away from opinion or not opinion, but stay, oh, away, from no, not opinion, stay but away from character assassination. Absolutely. Stick to facts. Yep. Some, people, did, some people take the character assassination route, but if it's not wrong, we'll print it. You know, if it's not factually inaccurate, that's the way to go. But there's also, you know, civility at stake, too. For sure, certainly. It's an interesting time for the state and locally with the primaries in the yep. election next year. I can't stress sure. it enough, 400 words or less, by the way, on the, on, the, on the letters. We've had to turn down a lot of people to make them rewrite their letters, 400 words or less. We don't please. want any novels. We give... Yeah, they don't want any novels, not we. Well, that, and we, we actually have one of the most, most liberal uh, lengths in the entire state of, of letters to the editor. Our friends in Fargo have a 250-word limit, and Grand Forks has 300, Bismarck has 300. We, keep, we let you guys go up to 400, so prattle away. There we and go, we'll folks. print it. We'll take a quick commercial break. Come back with our interview with Matt Mack from Dickinson Parks and Rec.
Consolidated is committed to providing advanced network systems and service to the business world, staying ahead of the curve by offering digital technology with voice over IP, Ethernet circuits, hosted telephone systems, as well as cloud-based networking. GNET Fiber technology allows us to offer internet speeds up to one gig, making your network more efficient. Our sales and technical team take pride in providing state-of-the-art service to our customers. At Consolidated, we're here to listen and offer the most efficient solutions for your business. All right, folks, welcome back to Insight In Studio. Our guest this week, Matt Mack with Dickens of Parks and Rex. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Hey, it's always a pleasure seeing you two. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So it's summertime, it's getting hot out, man. There's lots happening around the area with Dickens of Parks and Rex. First off, we have a, the, the most popular new addition, probably, mm -hmm. to the West River Community Center, the outdoor pool. Outdoor pool. That's kicking off right now, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. We, uh, we opened a couple of weeks ago. Actually, we've been open. Uh, been a little chilly the last yeah, uh, yeah. couple of weeks, but um, some people grin and bear it. Yeah, this week this is, week is good. This yeah, week is really yeah. Um, yeah, no, we're open. We're open uh, 12 to 8 every day, Monday oh. through Sunday. Um, very affordable prices: five dollars for kids, seven dollars for adults. If you've got a West River Community Center membership, you're you're good to go in there. So awesome! Um, you get right in. You get right in. Good. Right in. So. Yeah, some of those hot days that are coming up here, you're probably going to have to beat the rush and get uh, some sun get in, and get a get good in, spot. Yep, and, get in line yeah. before it's one in, one out. So Yeah, nice. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, obviously you guys do a lot with this outdoor pool. Now you have Swimming Under the Stars. Tell us a little bit about that. That's later in the summer when absolutely. it's real nice and hot. Yes. Um, swimming Under the Stars has been a huge hit. We started it last year. Mm -hmm. um, this year we're shooting for the weekend of uh, July 29th and 30th. Nice. Um, it's a night where we provide it for free for the entire public. Um, so both those nights, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. And uh, what we do, we've got a DJ, we've got photo booths, we've got free food, uh, free admission, like I said. Um, just good times. Just good yeah. times. It's, yeah. a, it's a good time out there. It was, like I said, last year was a, it was a was a good success with yeah, it. So absolutely. Yep. I mean, you guys do so much more than just you know the rec center and the, the, the community center and things like that. Talk a little bit about more little more about some of the things you guys have coming up even next couple of weeks here. yeah next couple of weeks uh, we've got the Montana North Dakota Badlands Bowl mm -hmm. um, which goes back and forth between us and Miles City correct, correct. high yeah. school all-star yep. football game for yeah. those of you who don't know correct yeah and it's and our turn this year it is our turn this year and hopefully we get that uh, trophy back this year <laughs> yeah. yeah but um, yeah no that's coming up June 18th um, so for those that are interested in that uh, it starts at six o'clock for those that like tailgating that starts at three o'clock at the BAC yes. at the BAC BAC yep. at the BAC. Yep. Oh, it's awesome. a great time. There's a lot of the stuff Hank. involved. Yeah, yeah the the Hank. there's a yep. lot of stuff involved in that too. There's a 5K, right? And there's a yeah, there's of a little things. It, actually, that morning, um, the morning before the the event, um, there is a there is a 5K that morning. Mm -hmm. Um, registration starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, goes till 8:45, wow. and then uh, it the race starts at 9 o'clock. So um, we do encourage though, if anybody's interested in that 5K, mm -hmm. they can go on our uh, website, dickinsonparks.org and, and get signed up for cool. it right okay. away. So. And so uh, also the golf courses, lots happening there this summer, isn't there? Absolutely. All, all, all time, tournaments there's, every there's week. There's tournaments and, almost every week yeah. at the golf course. So <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot going on out there too. Um, we've done some renovations and things like that with some of the holes out there. I mm -hmm. think it'll be a, a, a great improvement over the, the last couple of years. So. Um, Sam Davis does a phenomenal job out there, and, and uh, yeah, it's great. Okay, talk about band shells coming up too. Is that yeah. the next Tuesday um, starts yep. already? Yep, so it starts next Tuesday, the band shell concert series. Um, it's, uh, it's basically family atmosphere, fun for everybody. You don't have to pay anything, you just show up. It starts at seven o'clock at night. It's a lot of local bands, so, um, you know, different genres, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. There are food trucks that are, are going to be there this year. Nice. Um, so, you know. That's a big, that's a big get for you guys. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And it's, like I said, it's something that's provided for free to the public. So mm -hmm. we encourage everybody to come out and bring and, a lawn and chair. Bring a lawn bring chair. Bring a lawn chair. Or, or bring a blanket. blanket yeah, whatever, you out, whatever you want to yep. do there. Bring but. something to sit on for yep. sure. What absolutely. else you guys got going on? Um, I wanted to mention the so this summer is pretty exciting. I know a lot of people in town have been excited about getting more trails and things like mm, that going yeah. in town. Biking, hiking, I know what you're going through. I'm excited trails. about this. Yes. I know yes. what you're trying to talk about. Here. Um, the Crooked Crane Trail of is uh, we've been anticipating this for a while, and um, we finally have have got there. And the Crooked Crane Trail is going to be located out at uh, Patterson Lake. Mm -hmm. Um, in the recreation area. It's going to be about a two-mile loop out there. It's completely paved. Yep, awesome. Um, and 
anybody's welcome to use that. The, uh, the trail is going to include some pods on nice. it, um, and they're like exercise pods. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some things for, for, kids to, uh, huh. yeah. for kids to do on that trail as well. So I think it's going to be a great addition to uh, actually That's what such we a offer in the city of Dickinson. Yeah. So. Is, the, is the crane up yet? Is the metal crane Crane's up not up, but I oh. did see, uh, I just drove out there this afternoon actually, and, and uh, they're getting pretty far along with the trail. They said nice. towards the end of the summer is when they were saying that trail is going to be done, but I would say it's probably going to be sooner than that. And, wow. Um, yeah, it's, That'll be it's gonna be. It That'll be gonna, a hit. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be cool. Just the crane itself is gonna create photo opportunities. I mean, Tom Krebs, yep. a local metal artist, Absolutely. designer friend of ours, he created this this crane, and it sure. is it's cool. Yeah, no, I like I said, I I know I saw that out there, mm -hmm. and yeah, it is. That's that's gonna be a, a huge addition to the city of Dickinson. And of course, there's so. all the the youth leagues throughout the summer yep. as well too going yep. on. Yep, a bunch of youth leagues going on. Ball, and, soccer, all that good stuff, um, like we usually do. Um, we do offer some other activities as well, you know, art and mm -hmm. um, summer play park and, yep. and those sorts of things. Yeah. Our registration is still open right now, so mm -hmm. for those that haven't got registered, they still can um, by going to our website, DickinsonParks.org, and, and uh, getting signed up for those activities. So um, there's also a lot of new ones that we added this year, too. So for those that are looking for something new, they should, like I said, go to our website and, yep. and take a look. Kind of take based a off glance. popular demand. People yes, ask for things absolutely. you bring into the program yeah. and we, fold. And um, so we've, we're doing some new things at the community center with uh, fitness classes for kids mm -hmm. and um, doing some uh, educational nutrition programs yeah. for kids to you know learn how to eat healthy and and uh, be healthy and should we go? that sort of thing. Yeah, we, <laughs> what's the age? I think we off? should go. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. But um, if you can't tell, we yeah. both like donuts. <laughs> It's just one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's uh, we're we're headed in the right direction with with offering some of those programs. Great. We've got a lot of younger. Was there a call for that? Was there a, was there more of a call for that too? Yeah. Like um, there's people? yeah parents interested in and the thing is is we've got a lot of younger families in mm -hmm. town still yep. and oh, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of. Um, younger, younger kids. I yeah. mean, little, little kids, little, 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 kids. Under, yeah. little yeah. kids, and uh, so we we've been looking at expanding some of those things and. That's what we came up. So That's came exciting. up with. One thing I know you want to talk about: a new fall golf league too. Is that there right? There is a new fall golf league, and um, get ready. Now. I yeah, exactly. Get on the. <laughs> so well, I was going to say get on the waiting list, but no. Actually, there's uh, going to be a new process for for that league. Um, it'll start the end of August. Mm -hmm. um, July is when you'll be able to sign up for it. Actually, the deadline is the beginning part of July. So if you go to our website, DickinsonParks.org. If I don't plug that, I don't know how many Keep times. Keep going. Um, <laughs> Let's put if, a banner above your yeah, head to roll yeah. right. across. Um, so if uh, if you're interested in that, you can go to our website. It is on there. The information's there. But mm -hmm. um, it will be this August through October. And uh, what we will do is we will take all the registrations or we'll t take all the people that want to uh, register for it and yeah. we'll run a lottery on it and see who oh, gets the nice. price. So it's a good it's idea. Good. It's, yeah. al it's always a popular thing. Kind of like, kind of like deer season. Thing. Yeah. Kind of like deer hunting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, some of those popular things, you got to do that. So. That's how it goes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it sounds yeah. like a full and exciting summer Absolutely. at Parks and Rec and around the community. For sure, lots it, happening. It is. Awesome, yeah. Thanks Matt. for coming in, Matt. We do appreciate it again. Appreciate and, uh, it. You bet. Always good to see you guys. Get ready. It's going to be a fun one. For sure. <laughs> We'll take a break, come back and look at the week ahead right here on Insight. A bundle from Consolidated is your local choice for internet, TV, and phone at a better value. Our internet is now faster than ever with GNET technology. Get affordable, consistent speeds now up to one gig. Our state-of-the-art TV connections deliver more HD choices and convenient DVR options, including TiVo. Our local phone service keeps you in touch for less, all backed by exceptional 24-hour support. Make the local choice for a better value by bundling. Call or visit Consolidated online today. All right, folks, welcome back to the Insight Time for a look at the week ahead of the big stories coming up in the area. Dustin, uh, what's going on uh, in the paper this week? What can we expect? You know, we've got a few stories that haven't been set in stone yet, so I don't really want to kind talk early, about them. Yep. It's early, but... Uh, you know, we have a story that'll be coming in this weekend about a Dickinson woman who is helping raise money for childhood cancer as kind of a way to honor her late husband who died at 25 after being <coughs> diagnosed at 18. Too young. Um, so yeah, it's a, and we'll have a kind of a sidebar on her business as well, not her business, but what she does sure. in her business sure. as well. It'll be a good kind of a package story. Um, uh, her name is, I think, Katie Schlosser. Um, 
re, she works at Rehab Visions, but she has this thing called Fishing for a Cure. Uh, they take them up to Beulah Bay and they raise money in this fish, fishing tournament mm -hmm. and they donate it to childhood cancer research. Oh, that's great. What a good kids cause. affected by childhood cancer. Good cause for sure, so, definitely. Uh, and like I said, other than that, we've got a few few stories we're working on. Hafner's yeah. working on a couple things. Uh, Sydney's working on a couple things as well as Kelsey, who's writing this story. So we have a few things coming up. I'm I sure mean, with, I'll even probably work on something. Who knows? I'm sure with the, with the election on Tuesday, You'll have a lot about votes, or not voting, but a lot yeah. about candidates, what's going on around the area politically. Absolutely. And this campaign trail. And, uh, uh, you know, you and I, we, we stay pretty politically mm -hmm. engaged. Yeah. You know, I, I, politics really interests me. I, I would never want to be directly involved, I don't think. <laughs> just because there's too much red tape. You don't like the show Veep, huh? No, I like Veep. I, like Veep. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be involved, I don't think, yeah. politically. I, just, I love to follow politics, though. Right. Um, so uh, We talk about this off air a lot, how... People should get out and vote. Yes. So if we can and encourage you to do one thing, is get out and this vote. This was going to be my monkey business segment. Kind of ran out of time, ran out of thoughts in my head to really write it the way I wanted to. So I figured, you know what, let's just talk about it. Yeah. You know, we talk about these people who get out there on Facebook and Twitter or whatever, and they say everything under the sun about mm -hmm. people, about the city. They about, share false memes. Yes. They yeah. share whatever thought comes into their brain. And there's some of those same people don't go out and vote. Yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, it's great that you're out there, you're expressing your freedom of speech and everything like that. Fantastic. But at least go out there and express your main freedom of speech by using that pen to fill in the little circle and vote for your candidate. And what do we always I don't hear from people? They always say, it's just one vote. My vote doesn't they matter. Do. That's does. not true. Some, That's one not day, true. something's going to come down to one vote or two votes, and people are going to be kicking themselves because they didn't vote. It's going to happen one day. It, it's bound to. It's kind of has happened. It, the dangling small, Chad. It well, it's, it's happened close. in small races yeah. in cities like Dickinson and They've across the country. Yes. They've had recounts because things are way too tight. You know, and fill in the gaps on. And make sure if it says vote for vote for as many as two, vote for two. Even if you don't like the person, vote for somebody. Yeah. You know, if it's if you got four candidates there, it says vote for two. Bowman County, your home county, has very interesting. ten commission candidates for three it's positions. Very heated races right That's now. That's awesome. There. Yeah, ten commission candidates for three commission seats. That's great. From what I follow, heated, from what I've followed, the people in Bowman now they feel the community can go one of two ways, mm -hmm. and some really want to kind of go one way, and some want to take that big turn and make Bowman turn the corner almost to a new kind of uh, economy down there. Okay, and that's the plan a little bit. And but I, it's 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 two different mindsets, two unique mindsets. And well, I want to know which one's wrong, which one's right. That's up for you to decide as a voter to know what's going on in the oh, process. Well, I'm going to call down to Bowman County this week, and I got to ask them. You know, what yeah. if no one gets more than X amount of percent? Yeah. You know, do do you have to do a revote? Do a runoff? Yes. Or, no, or no. I mean, I don't think this is a runoff situation in a county commission race, but I've never seen that many commission candidates of any race before yeah. in North Dakota. Obviously, our Star County Commission next week, it's a big deal. Huge uh, there's a deal. lot of people on that one. There's three three positions open. Go out there, vote for it, please. And there's also school board elections. School there's board elections. Planning, not planning and zoning, but uh, school board elections, and uh, there's even park and, park and rec Parks elections. And rec yeah. yep. Park board members. Park yeah, board members. So, uh, three people running for two positions there, so yeah. And with, with these... And these, you can learn a lot about your candidates really, really quick. But yeah, absolutely, a, a, a lot of them have on the internet. We do stories, you know. Uh, we have we've done stories in every city race. Uh, we've yeah. got a couple stories coming by the end of the week just to kind of shore up things. Find their sure. official campaign pages. Yep. Look at what Even they're about. Even if it's not our paper, go to your local newspaper. You're, you know, if you're in Bowman, if you're in Heading or New England, wherever, Mott, wherever you are, you know, your local paper has done stories on your candidates. They they better have by now, you know. And I assume most of those papers. I know a lot of those people. They have. And Kildare, wherever, you know, mm -hmm. research your local candidates, find out who they are, get to know the people. If you know what, call them up. If you want to know that's who they job. are, that's going to be their job. Call them on the phone, you call them at home. You have their cell phone number, you call them. If you got a question about what if they're they going to do as, email, as your commissioner number. or whatever, call yeah. them. Yep, that's, that's going to be their job. They better get used to it. To represent their constituents for sure. It's Absolutely. very, very important. Uh, it's just, just, Learn about your candidates. Learn about yep. the issues. Get up there and, and be an educated voter because that's the most powerful thing you can be with that vote is educated. Couldn't have said it better myself. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, there's all some other stuff happening around town this week, Dustin. Yeah. There's some big things kicking off. There's this little concert this, festival downtown. This, this guy. There's some music and stuff and some street vendors. First and on first. First on first. Dickinson Summer Nights kicks off this evening, uh, June 9th yep. here. Cody Charles Band, Michael, or not Cody Charles and Whiskey Rebellion kick things off. Uh, it's going to be a who you got next week? Next week is the Michael Scott Band, and uh, the Carbon Copy opens for them. Local band Carbon Copy. If I was a Michael Scott Band, I'd just 
The Office. Yeah, I just the all, I, office, all I think yeah. of is The Office. I know. I, I wish they were. They're from Denver. And they're they're really well traveled. Uh, okay. Cover and original song band. They're gonna good. put on a good show, I think. But uh, we have. Uh, I've been working on this project with the Odd Fellows mm -hmm. and some other people. Uh, big shout out to my, my buddies Trace Twos, my Goya Guard, since this past December, mm -hmm. and uh, the planning that's went into this and the consideration yeah. with the city and everybody else has been really uh, extensive. So we hope that it's a really uh, well flowed, well arranged. Laid yeah. out. And, and what's it, what's great is they everybody. can finish watching Inside at six o'clock at six thirty, and then head on yeah. downtown because things are just getting started. We've got ten to twelve different food vendors every week. We have barbecue, cotton candy, ice cream, yep. coffee, the horks, kettle. Well, I go down to eat. The food's awesome. I go down. Yeah, to the eat. food is awesome. Yeah. You got the worst shop down there. Yeah, the, the, the worst shop. You got, got the Thai Bach, truck, Bach and barbecue Thai truck. A Polynesian barbecue truck's going to be there. Ooh, I know where right? I'm going. Yeah, so I know where I'm going. We have stuff for the kids and the family. Uh, we have the American Kids Zone right in front of American Insurance Center, gated area for the family and kids with jumper yep. castles, basketball games, prizes, all kinds of stuff happening. And then there, tell so. for the adults, tell them what you were just telling me. And Matt. yes, so if you are an adult and you want to come down and consume an adult beverage, the first thing you should do is come to. The Odd Fellows Event Cup and Wristband IDing area. Get in line. Five dollars for your 21 and up wristband. You get your event cup, and then you can consume beer and wine in that cup anywhere in the barricaded event area you want to be. Anywhere yep. in the area. Um, if you want to consume uh, any kind of you hard get, liquor or well get, drinks, yeah, you, you to need go to go the into the bar and stay in the bar. You cannot come out You can out get outside. those beer and wines where? You can get those from uh, the Bernie's Esquire Club, okay. one of our great sponsors and partners of the event. They're going to have a sponsor bar and also their windows are going to be open for beer and wine. Yep. And we're also going to have a bar inside the Rock, the first on first bar in the Rock, former Rock Liquor Store location. Mm -hmm. So many places to fill up and get your cups filled. Um, like I said, the biggest thing you do if you're looking for adult beverages, get in line right away when you get there. Yep. Wristband ID, five bucks, go party. So say you walk into the, say you walk into the Rock. You're gonna need to go back out and get in line. It's just like it's. it's so, but you want to get a Coors Light at the Rock. You got to go back out, get your wristband, no matter what. Well, if you want to stay inside, Ricky, you can do that. But if you want to well, yeah, take yeah. it outside the interior, it's got to okay. be in the cup and the wristband. Good to yeah. know. Yeah. Good to know for sure. So. Uh, and we'll have some nights we'll have two tents for that. Some nights we'll have one depending on the size of the act. Oh yeah, so yeah. You can expect bands like Firehouse, Blackhawk, LA Gun, Steelheart, local bands in the mix, regional bands like Dirty mm -hmm. Word, Judd Hoose. Oh, uh, we have Dirty Word. we have extensively lined up probably the biggest and best free concert lineup for a community our size anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dare say in the Midwest. Oh, in the country. Dare say in the country. Yeah. I mean. The, it's a lot of planning work, but we hope that everyone enjoys it. And if they have, if there's any questions or concerns, you can directly call me or email I'm me. I'm excited about Blackhawk. Uh, Blackhawk's going to be great. It's going to be yeah, awesome. And hats off to all of our volunteers, sponsors, and everyone making this thing possible because it's, it's it's such a huge event now that it takes a lot of people to make this whole thing roll forward. Right. So right. well, we're I excited. Wish you good. I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank I know you. it's a heck, it's a heck of an endeavor. You yeah. guys have put in a lot of hours, <laughs> a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of free time, a lot of time that you're not getting paid for that you guys are putting in. So, you know, good luck to you. It's going to be awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Matt Mack for coming in tonight on Insight, talking about what's happening at Parks and Rec. A lot of, yep. lot of stuff going on yep. around there. And, oh, new and additions. And stay tuned in next week, too. We're going to try to have whoever our new mayor is, our mayor-elect, come on the show next week. Hopefully we're going to work on it. the schedule is open. Yep. Hopefully they won't they're going to be busy. The next meeting, will they're, they? No. And they're going to be busy. But it's going to be, it'll be a good interview if we can get them in. Sh they should come uh, lay out their vision for Dickinson, I think. <laughs> they they kind of did to us today. Yeah, so. exactly. So, folks, we'll see you right here next week on Insight.